Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench for you here. So this is my Radio Master Zorro. Uh, this thing has been just amazing for me. I really like the form factor. I like how it feels in my hands. Tons of switches. This thing's been something else. So as far as transmitters go, anyone looking at something like this form factor, I would highly recommend it. I have a, a playlist on the channel with all kinds of content on the Radio Master Zorro. So pretty much anything I do with the Radio Master Zorro will go into that playlist. So check that out if you want to see more information. On the back here, I have a Happy Model ES24 TX Slim Pro module. This module's been updated to 3.2 ELRS, so we're ready to go. This thing's already updated. The Lewis script and everything, so the radio's talking to the module. That's all set up. In this video, I want to go over this flight controller. This is a 1-2S flight controller. This is the Happy Model Cross F4 ELRS. We're going to be going over this flight controller and kind of getting to know it, things you should do or what I think you should do when you first get your flight controller. We're going to go into beta flight. We're going to check out a few things. We're going to update the uh, receiver in here so that it can communicate with 3.2 ELRS in our radio. We're going to get them bound up and talking before we even put it into a quadcopter. Uh, so we're going to do some uh, stuff in beta flight on that. Um, so that's what this video is going to be about. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and get started here with the Radio Master Zorro. Just to let you know, I've already gone through everything you need to do with the radio as far as setting up a model, uh, setting up your ELRS, Lewis script, the module update, everything you need to do with that. And then in, the, in that video, one hour and 40 minute video in my playlist, I go through this quadcopter kind of thinking as if it was a bind and fly, has this Super B built in SPI receiver. And we went through everything to set all of this up so that this thing would fly. We did the motors. We did uh, rotation of the board. I mean, everything's in there that I could imagine. Um, so if you've already watched that video or you have enough knowledge background um, of where I'm at right now in this stage, uh, you, should, you should follow along pretty good in this video. I want to go kind of quick of some of the things that I would do if I own this flight controller. I just received it. I think there's some things that you should do before you put it in your quadcopter. We're going to go into beta flight. We're going to check to make sure things are working correctly before we do anything else. And then also we're going to update the receiver to 3.2 so that it communicates with our radio because our module is now updated to 3.2 ELRS. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab my voltmeter and I'm going to go through the board physically before we connect it to the computer. All right, so we have everything laid out that we need. So I have my flight controller. I have a diagram for you so I can kind of blow this up and, and show you where I'm going on the board. And then we have our meter. Uh, so it's real important to go ahead and get this board checked out before you plug it into the computer um, or put it into your quadcopter, start soldering on it and everything, just to make sure everything works from Happy Model. I've had issues before where I received a diamond board. Actually, this one right here. Um, the ground... Uh, let me turn it in here. The ground pad and all the components on this side of the board were shorted out. Um, brand new board. They want me to send that back to China to have it evaluated before they'll send a replacement. I don't know if you've seen shipping costs lately for me. Uh, this is not going to happen. So unfortunately, that's done. I'll save it for components. I'll I'll use it maybe. So let's go through a couple things real quick. I have this diagram for you so I can tell you where we're going with the meter and we'll just check those things out real quick before we plug it into the computer, before we solder it, put it in a quadcopter. Let's just check it out and make sure because I tell you what, it's going to be real easy to send it back if you haven't soldered on it or installed it or anything. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to ground and lipo. So this is the positive side of your lipo. Now they're saying that this is 1N2S. So basically your positive side of your lipo lead your ground side we're going to do a continuity check between there if you're not sure what continuity check means on my playlist quick tips um, i show you how to do continuity and i explain how that process works uh, but we're going to go between these two grounds and then we're going to go between video in so the video in pad next to the five volt 
uh, we're going to go video in to ground and we're going to make sure that our OSD and the filtration that's involved in that to get our video signal is at 75 roughly ohms. Um, if you have like 12 or it's shorted or infinity, uh, something's wrong with the board that you're not going to have video. It's going to be a terrible mess. So 5 volt to ground should be 75 ish ohms. And then we're going to check from ground to each motor pole. So all three, uh, four sets of three motor poles, we're going to make sure we don't have any ground. Um, I actually have another diamond board that had that issue where I had ground to uh, my motor pole was shorted out. So unfortunately that's not going to work. And then we're going to check our voltage regulator. So there's a uh, little filtration here and our regular for 5 volts. So we have our 5 volt and ground. We're just going to check to make sure that there's no continuity between those two. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll refer to the diagram as I do it. So we'll set our meter. I love this meter. I, I like this meter for the channel because this is very inexpensive. Um, at this point in time, I have no affiliated. I have no Patreon. I have, I have nothing. Um, so I still recommend this meter. And I like using a meter that's only like $20 on Amazon for the channel because a lot of people can't afford like a several hundred dollar meter and, and utilize it and fly quadcopters. Uh, so we have it on continuity. Uh, this is for our diode. We'll go ahead and change that over to function. So we have a continuity check. I'm going to go between our LiPo. Now you heard that initial beep when I plugged in. That kind of tells me a little something. That means that this board has a fair amount of capacitance. And just for giggles on this, I, I really don't want to make this video long. I want to move along pretty quick. But I'm going to go ahead and measure what is the capacitance of this flight controller. Wow, 342, that's pretty good. I mean, that that's equal right up to uh, some of my 3-inch quadcopters with a capacitor on it. So 341 microfarads is a pretty decent amount of capacitance for such a small board. So I'm excited about that. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and check our ground to our motor pump. Motor pump. I'm sorry, I went, went between these two first. And now I'm going between ground and all the uh, motor poles. So three here, three here, three here, and three here. So I'm just going to slide that along. Try not to touch anything else. Because if you touch something with ground, like your USB case. All right. So no continuity between motor poles and ground. So that's good. So now I'm going to go to my video in right here. It's my video in. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and plug into him. And it doesn't matter which side you have. Red red, and, and black doesn't mean anything in continuity check. So I'm going to go here. Go here. Come on now. So video in to, to uh, ground. 75.4 ohms. So we're golden there. Should have no problem with video. And now we're going to go between uh, ground and 5 volt. And we're just going to make sure that we don't have any continuity. If you hear this and you see the zeros, uh, your voltage regulator is shot. Which should give you an indication when you go here, but you never know. Uh, so just doing that quick continuity check lets me know that I'm not going to have some of them same issues that I had with the diamond uh, boards that I have sitting over there. Um, so I think we're going to be good to go to plug this into the computer to solder on it to do whatever we need to do. So that quick little checkout is is pretty important in my opinion. Let me know in comments what do you think? Should, should I go through something like this? Um, should I make just a quick tips video on this by itself without adding it into another video? Uh, let me know in comments. Um, but I think we're done for now with that. Let's go ahead and um, Let's go ahead and jump into Betaflight. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. We're going to check our gyro. This is a cool thing about this flight controller. They're boasting that it's a BMI 270 gyro, which is supposed to be a better gyro for this type of application. Uh, when you're dealing with a whoop, you're dealing with a lot of uh, current flow, a lot of uh, you know, you throttle real high, you bump in the stuff, your motors spike. Uh, that voltage um, spiking and all of that current flow happening the ICM gyros are kind of sensitive to that. The 3.3 uh, volt uh, that's built into the board, it, it kind of gets spiked. It kind of gets uh, a little bit 
uh, weary of that, if you will. So they're saying this BMI 270 gyro is more susceptible to that type of environment. So it's supposed to be a better, more locked in gyro. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I have a couple BMI 270 gyros on diamonds and they're fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and jump onto the computer with Betaflight. We're going to check our gyro. We're going to just kind of look at a couple things, evaluate what they have in their stock. We're not going to mess with, in this video, we're not going to mess with the Betaflight firmware. So we're not going to update this firmware to 4.4. We're going to leave it on Betaflight, whatever it is. I still have to look myself. Uh, but we're going to deal with the receiver. We're going to get that updated to 3.2. And then we'll grab the radio and bring it back and, and uh, get going with that. So let's jump over to the computer. All right, so we're going to go ahead and plug in our quadcopter. Um, there's a micro USB connection. We're going to set that off to the side. We want to make sure that there's nothing, nothing around that can touch it or, or mess with it. Short it out while we're messing around. Uh, so this is brand new, first time plugged in. I have a warning here. Uh, accelerometer needs to be calibrated. I don't have it in a quadcopter right now, so that's not a problem. I can go ahead and calibrate that really easy. Uh, fix these problems before so it just looks like the accelerometer uh, so let's go over here to setups and then um, before I calibrate the accelerometer I just want to move the board around see how fast that I'm moving that around I just want to make sure that that is moving as fast as my fingers if you're looking here at headings and these aren't changing when you're moving the board around and the and the quad is basically sitting in, in a flat position and not moving at all and these headings aren't changing at all that means that the gyro is not functioning sometimes when you calibrate the accelerometer I'm gonna go ahead and hold it as flat as I can calibrate that all right after the calibration is finished uh, we're just gonna move it around make sure yep it moves around good now we don't have it in a quadcopter so we're not really sure if this is pitch forward pitch back right left we're not quite sure how exactly we're going to place it in the quadcopter whether or not we're going to be upside down so those things will have to be changed later but what i'm going to do is just turn it to where it looks like the um, front of the board is pointing towards the computer i'm just going to reset it and i'm just going to make sure it flows as fast as i'm moving it in my hand um, it's moving on the screen so that means that the gyro is working correctly um, if it's really slow and moving really slow um, you might want to recalibrate it um, if that doesn't work there might be another issue in there maybe disconnect and uh, unplug it and plug it back in and try again so i think we're good to go with the gyro it's moving good um, as you can see here they have firmware updated to 432 so the 432 firmware this is not 44 let's go ahead in here and we'll go to status All right, and it looks here, looks to me like we have a F411 uh, processor. The gyro right here is the BMI 270. Uh, so they are in fact telling the truth when they said it has a BMI 270 gyro on it. Um, arming flags RX loss, so there's no, it doesn't recognize the RX right at the moment. Uh, CLI is open. Of course, you can't do any arming of your quadcopter when you're in a CLI. MSP means you're connected to the USB, so that all looks good. As long as this list isn't really long, you should be fine. Curious if they have a table in here. Uh, looks like they do have a table in here, so interesting. I'll have to see if it's the same. It looks to be the same table as their OpenTX, so I'll have to check that out. Just for giggles, I'm going to put this on zero. So when I do something later, I'm not forgetting that and burning, burning VTX for no reason. Um, so in ports tab, looks like they have this serial RX is set up on RX2. And they have the VTX. Uh, when you hook up a VTX, it'll be ready um, on UR1. Uh, so this is already set up for you, so you don't have to mess with that. They got a lot of they got a lot of settings on here already done. So interesting. Sorry, I just had to turn it off because I, I never use air mode on a whoop. Um, I fly angle mode. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and go over to the receivers tab and then, all right. And what we're going to do next is we're going to update the internal um, serial RX. So we need to go and close beta flight and we're going to go into ELRS and we're going to grab the correct file. So let's go ahead and disconnect from here. All right, so we're in our Express LRS configurator. We downloaded from the uh, Express LRS website on off their GitHub assets page, and we have 155. And any information you need to know uh, about the module on the radio, like I said, I already have that video. I'm already updated to 320 on that slim module, uh, so that's taken care of. In that video, I didn't go further with an, uh, an external receiver, if you will. In this case, it's basically an external, think of it as an external receiver. Um, the serial RX is external in this case, even though it's built onto the board. It's pretty cool. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. When I seen the specs on this board, I was like, I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to have that. Um, so we're at 3.2. So now we're going to, we're going to build the information that we need to flash our receiver. It's, it's really quick and easy. For this video, it's going to be lengthy because I'm trying to explain it to you. But honestly, I could go in in five minutes. I can have this thing updated. Um, so I'm going to go and thank you, Express LRS uh, developers. I mean, this software is amazing and it's free to us. Um, super, super cool stuff. So the category here, we're going to go to Happy Model. We want 2.4 gig. Uh, that's the system that we're using. We're not using the 900 in this case. So we're going to choose that category. So we have our 320. We're not worried about any of this other stuff. We have our 320. That's our version. We have our happy model 2.0 gigahertz because that's the system that we're running. The receiver is at 2.4 gigahertz. The module that we have is 2.4 gigahertz. Make sure those match up. Um, and then you want to go ahead and choose the receiver. Now we have two choices for TX. That's already taken care of. See the ES24TX Pro series. Uh, that update information, I've already taken care of that in that other video. If you need to understand how to get your radio and your module to work, uh, that video will take care of you. In this case, we're only dealing with receivers. I have experience with uh, EP1 ELRS receivers, and that's what the manufacturer, if you want to go dig on their website and spend a couple hours reading, uh, you'll find that the EP1 is the uh, receiver that they're using so that protocol that's what they're using they're not using the dual they're using the the standard ep1 receiver so that's the one we want to choose in this case now for me i have a pretty good wi-fi unit uh, in my computer i prefer to go wi-fi on this some people say that pass through is better yards i don't know it takes a little it takes me like five minutes to do this um, i already have everything set up from history so we've already We've kind of went through all this stuff in that other video, but in case you want to look, one thing you need to kind of choose in here is your bind phrase. You know, what do you want that to be? And then this value here, um, if you don't have your radio turned on, this value is in seconds. If you don't have your TX powered up, they're not bound up communicating, um, your receiver on this flight controller will go into bind mode automatically. It'll go into, I'm sorry, Wi-Fi mode automatically after a set time. I have mine at one minute. That way, if I plug in my quadcopter and I don't have my radio plugged in, it won't go into Wi-Fi mode until 60 second interval comes along. But this is really cool about this board. It actually has a built-in boot button so we can go into it right away. We don't have to wait. I'm going to jump back to the bench and I'll show you kind of what the LEDs look like when you when you get into Wi-Fi mode. Um, I think there was some confusion about that. Your home Wi-Fi network, you need to make sure that's correct or this stuff's not going to communicate um, when you're doing build and flash. I don't do build and flash. Every time I've done build and flash, uh, um, it, it just seems like it's much more work. Uh, plus, I want to have this file that I'm about to create. I want to have this file ready to go. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and build this file. Once it's finished building, um, it will go into the desktop as a folder. So let's go ahead and grab that folder real quick. All right, so we're in this folder. Okay, now this might look like a lot to you, but don't worry. Okay, because this is everything I needed to do for previous versions. And I got kind of everything in one place. Um, so this is the beta flight all in one uh, board that I have, which is very similar to this one uh, for happy model. And this is my happy model stuff. 
so like I said, don't don't be concerned about getting into too much information at once because this is my primary file. So I'm going to choose this one and then this is for the TX. So this is information for the transmitter on the radio. We're not we're going to ignore that. We don't need Lewis script for this because that's the communication between your module and your radio. So we're not worried about that. We're going to go into our receivers here. OK, so this is the firmware that I need for my EP1. Right here it is. Happy model EP1. OK, um, you, you want to grab this information. Uh, have it readily available in a folder where you know what it where it is okay uh, but this is what we're going to end up using so what we need to do is jump back to the bench and we're going to get our uh, our cross f4 flight controller into wi-fi mode uh, before we do that um, i'm done with the elrs website i'm done with the configurator so i don't need my home wi-fi network anymore so i'm going to disconnect from that first uh, so I'm going to do that now. Let's go ahead and jump over the bench. All right, so we're back at the bench. I have the diagram here for you, and I have the flight controller. It's connected to the USB on this end, but not on the computer. Uh, I'll plug that in here in a second so that I can power this up. You want to make sure that beta flight is uh, turned off so you don't go into COM port. Uh, make sure your radio is not turned on because you don't want any uh, interference with that. Uh, we're going to go into Wi-Fi mode. I'll zoom in and show you the LEDs. But just to let you know, on your receiver antenna, so on this side, you can see the receiver antenna coming out here. Um, there's a boot button right here. Okay, in your Express LRS configurator, the board will go into Wi-Fi mode at a certain interval. But we don't know what Happy Model set it at. It could be at five minutes for all we know. Uh, so it's really cool that they have a boot button here. Uh, to put it in the Wi-Fi mode. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and um, power this up. I'll zoom in so you can see the LEDs on it uh, when we put it in the Wi-Fi. All right, so we plugged it in there. Let me zoom in on it for you. All right, so as you're looking at the flight control, let me move that out of the way. So I have a pulsating green and then a pulsating green and a solid red here and then there's a solid red here uh, so that's the normal state of the flight controller we're going to turn it over here and we're going to uh, depress the boot button so this boot button right here go ahead and depress that I like to use something that's not metallic okay so we depress that There we go. So you see, can you see that super rapid fire? All right. Um, at this point in time, because the Wi-Fi module's on, it's going to possibly warm up. So I have a fan here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Let's go ahead and jump back to the computer, and we'll see what we got to do to download that firmware. All right. So we're over here at the internet, and I've already disconnected my home Wi-Fi network and. When we went in that Wi-Fi mode on, in, on the uh, flight controller, uh, another option popped up. Express LRS uh, popped up for us. Okay, um, so we have our receiver information. Our receiver firmware version is 3.0. Um, we need 3.2 because that's what our transmitter is on. Uh, so we need to go ahead and grab that file and choose it. As you can see from the... Uh, file location uh, we have our happy model rx uh, we're going to choose that file so right here that's the file that i chose the one on the right there um, and then we're going to just go ahead and click update on that all right and we'll update our wi-fi module it's still over there rapid firing away for us so now it's going to flash 3.2 to our serial receiver okay update okay all right uh, so that should be all done. Our binding phrase should be saved in there as well. Um, so that should be taken care of as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to the bench. All right, we're back over here to the bench. Uh, just to go ahead and shut the fan off here. And we're going to go ahead and unplug our, uh, our board. Um, we had the pulsing both LEDs went back to pulsing on the computer our home Wi-Fi because I have it on auto connect uh, it automatically disconnected from 
the Wi-Fi uh, built in here uh, and it automatically connected back to my home Wi-Fi but you might want to check on that if it doesn't because it actually disconnects once the updates finished it disconnects from the Wi-Fi on your computer and then you may not you'll be sitting there with no Wi-Fi uh, so make sure it's hooked back up to your home network um, so this now is flashed the receiver only we didn't mess with beta flight firmware we're gonna do our setup we're gonna run this thing totally stock they say that this has BioHeli S uh, so if you're wanting to use RPM filtering stuff like that um, you're gonna have to mess around with your ESC firmware but we're gonna run this thing completely stock this flight controller why I'm going through all this for you uh, this flight controller is actually gonna go into a pro frame so I have the uh, beta FPV Meteor 65 pro frame and the 35 millimeter props so I've got props off purple uh, with the uh, green and it's gonna be awesome it'll look it'll look very similar to this one so you can see the prop difference there uh, this this build is going to be put together for a HD zero build that I'm going to do um, you know just waiting on goggles and I'm gonna go ahead and build an HD zero quadcopter at some point in time so that's what the future of this uh, project is gonna look like uh, but for now I just want to make sure this is all done up uh, one thing I want to do is I want to power this up. I want to turn my radio on and I want to see if they're if the receiver is communicating So let's grab our radio Go ahead and power this up As you know, I power mine from if you're following in the channel. I power mine with external. I don't use internal batteries uh, This is the model that I have set up in my video. I just called it E. Well, I went ahead and finished this um, I also finished a telemetry screen, so when we plug in the quadcopter and we have telemetry and everything, it shows up on there. Uh, cool stuff. I don't know if I need to do a video on how to set that kind of thing up. Um, and then also, I'm going to have a switch so I can have my favorite uh, music playing. Um, things of that nature. Anyway, so I have this powered up. I have my antenna on. Make sure your antenna is on. Uh, make sure that your module is powered up correctly. If you followed that one hour and... Uh, 40 minute video you shouldn't have any questions at this point in time i'm gonna put this box under here because for some reason they designed that module <laughs> with the fan the way they did uh let's go ahead and power this up i don't have beta flight or any open uh windows on my computer uh there's nothing i turned it all back to desktop uh, so let's go ahead and plug this in let's see if you can see the leds here so we have a kind of a little bit quicker pulsate and then a slow pulsating there all right disconnect this I don't want it going into Wi-Fi mode I'm gonna go in lost. did you hear that I was kind of curious to wonder why I didn't say telemetry recovered might be the very first time telemetry look how that see how this is if you can see that see the blink 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 that means we're connected uh, the binding phrase worked so I didn't have to do any binding other than that just plug it in that was it how awesome is that when I set up my internal module or my external module on here it had a binding phrase and that's how sweet the binding phrase is it literally just hooks right up um, so let's go ahead and jump back over to beta flight and we're gonna go into the receivers tab and make sure this is all working set up our modes so we'll have like arm and um, angle horizon and acro and flip over when crash we'll make sure those are all working correctly uh, let me make sure this I really think that's dumb this fan is uh, if you set it flat on the table it'll it'll overheat your uh, module <laughs> there's no airflow uh, and then because this is powered up, I like to have a fan on it. Jump back over to the computer before I make this video way too long. Alright, so we're back over to beta flight here. Got our COM port working, so we're going to go ahead and connect. Um, you're probably not going to have any stick movement at this time, no. No stick movement. So what we need to do is, is we need to let the, uh, we need to let beta flight know that we've updated the firmware. So basically we're going to go to RC link here. And then we'll go to Express LRS. Um, let me get that shut for you. Um, I'm using 500 hertz. Okay. I kind of explain all this in that 
one hour and 40 minute video of, of why you would choose something else. Um, but I want to choose this one. And as you can see, uh, thanks to Betaflight and ELRS and all these people involved, I would love to meet every one of them at some point in time. If you ever run into me, uh, let me know, you know, like, Hey, props off. Uh, let me know you're a developer. I, I would love to, I would love to meet, uh, some of you uh, in person. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose the 500. So I'm going to go ahead and choose here. I'm racing. That's, that's my plan. Uh, and then a serial RX. Okay. It's not the built in SBI. It is a serial separated RX, if you will, if you think about it that way. I'm going to choose that, and then that's it for me in here. I'm going to go ahead and pick it, and I'm going to save and reboot, and that will change our configurator. So now we can reconnect, and let's go over to Receivers tab. All right, real quick at the bench, I just want to show you something real quick. To get stick movements in beta flight at this point in time, we need to go to our Express LRS. In your case, you're probably going to go right here to it. I have, now keep in mind, I have uh, several different Express LRSs going on, so I don't want files corrupted. So I'm going to do it a little differently. Here you're going to execute your Express LRS, okay? Uh, for me, um, I have it in a different place, so kind of ignore this, if you will. I mean, you can do it this way, too. This is where it's at. Uh, so I have my Lewis Grip uh, V3, so I'm going to go ahead and initiate that. And I'm going to execute. So this is the screen that you're wanting to see. And then at the top here, it'll say your Happy Model ES24TX Pro um, model mismatch. Uh, things aren't working out. So I have my ID at 8. So let me zoom in on this screen for you. Uh, so right now, uh, it's it's matched up. But you need to go down here to model match. Because it's saying model, model mismatch. And it's like flashing back and forth. Uh, go to model match. And turn this on but you want to make sure that the ID is correct because this is receiver number eight um, and then once you do that that mismatch message will go away and you'll start getting stick movements uh, go ahead and return out of here you hold down on return return out of your Express LRS Lewis script and then go into your model okay and then page over one time and then scroll that way and then right here, receiver number eight. So that's ID eight. We want to make sure that's correct in our Lewis script. Let me go back there and just make sure you you know where we're at here, right? So this is where you this is where you turn on your external RF crossfire, blah blah blah. Receiver number eight. That's important because that's ID number eight. So just to make sure that you know what we're doing here, let me just go back to where I was. So right here, ID number eight. You need to model match it to that ID uh, so you don't have the mismatch issue. Uh, at this point in time, you should have, let me go ahead and back all the way out of there, zoom out for you. So at this point in time, you should have stick movement. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Betaflight. We can see we still have our fan on. We still have this uh, nice and cool. Um, I just don't like to overheat the components doing tutorials. You may not need a fan. It might not get that hot for you. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump over to Betaflight and we're gonna grab our radio. So we're in the receivers tab. Uh, go ahead and turn telemetry on and save and reboot. All right, and then you can see here that our link quality and our RSSI. So if I cover up my antenna real good, oops. If I cover up my antenna real good, you can see that I'm losing my uh, RSSI, and then my radio link. You can see packet errors happening, uh, and then I let go of that, and that comes back nicely. So we got a real good solid connection. I move my radio back behind myself. There's a little movement. So that sensitivity is good. That's kind of letting you know here that the things are working correctly. Uh, throttle up, throttle down. If your model's sitting there spinning like crazy, then your channel map, you know, that's a whole setup on the radio uh, to make sure your channel map's correctly uh, placed. Otherwise, you know, when you throttle up, this one will move or that one will move and it gets all goofy. And this little quadcopter is just going crazy. Um, you, you know, you can fly this quadcopter in here and just make sure how sensitive that is. Uh, but anyway, so we have throttle up, we have pitch forward, pitch back, roll, le uh, roll left, roll right. Um, I still have to set my endpoints. I need to do that tonight. Uh, so anyway, AUGS1, 
aux 2, aux 3. So I have my arming. Always on Express LRS have your arming on one. That's recommended by the developers that for safety reasons and functionality of Express LRS that you need to have your arming on auxiliary one, which is channel five. And you want to have the end point, so 2000 be armed. You don't want it arming there. You want it armed there. Uh, so we know that that's done correctly. We'll go over to our modes tab. Brand new flight controller. Uh, they're not going to have any of this set up. So we want arm angle. Now me, I like angle and horizon. Um, and then flip over and crash. Because this is a whoop. So I'm not worried about anything else. And I had a range there. Go ahead and take this down. Hide those. I know that AUGS 1 or channel 5 is my arming. I know that my angle and my horizon is channel 2, or aux, uh, channel 6, sorry, uh, AUGS 2. And then flip over when crash is AUGS 3. And I will set these at their appropriate spots and shrink them down. And I'm going to save it. All right, so with everything in the default position, my quadcopter is in angle mode right away. Uh, when I arm it, uh, the, the little switch goes up into the far point. Um, and then when horizon mode, it goes to the middle. And then in acro, both these are grayed out. Uh, both of these being grayed out or both of these being removed, your quadcopters in acro forever. Um, and then turtle mode or flip over and crash, I enable that. And then arm it, turtle, disarm and rearm. So we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, make sure. And I'll go back over to the receiver tab. All right. Uh, so that's it. Let's jump over to the bench. All right, so back at the bench here. Let me put this up so my... I fight with that all the time. Um, turn my fan off. I'm disconnected from beta flight, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my flight controller. Okay. Uh, that is done. We, we've accomplished our mission here. I hope that this video is useful to you. Um, but that flight controller is completely bound up to our radio. Everything works correctly on it. We went through, we did a continuity check on it. We made sure the receiver's bound up. We updated the receiver. Like there was quite a bit of stuff that we got accomplished with this before we even touched it with solder, before we put it into our quadcopter. Um, I just recommend doing that to this. Uh, just because of the, some of the issues I've had with previous boards. Um, I have a very finite amount of money that I can spend on the hobby. And to purchase a numerous amount of flight controllers and not have them work is, is kind of a, a really bad deal for me. So I hope this helped you out. Uh, got you further along than you were before. Uh, and took care of issues that you may find in this process. Uh, to where you don't get stuck paying for a board that doesn't work. Um, so, you know, if it helped you out, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hated it, man, you give it a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.